No. No, 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 video off. Kau boleh record satu orang dia host dia boleh record Ya, yeah, aku rasa host dia record Yeah, I'm at my studio You sound a bit far away, is it just me or is it your side? Uh, it might be my The microphone Or it's quite good. Maybe her, her volume up. Oh, is it? Her laptop. Yeah. She can use headphone so she can hear clearly. No, because if I push you up to more, uh, all the echo coming in. Understand, understand. Just, just checking whether it was me or whether the mic is clear. I said to use the Uh, here, participant. Hmm. Is that the, is that the, the two Your life. I can hear you.
I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear everything inside now. Okay, you want to talk to golf first? I uh, every golf. Yeah. Ask golf. Hello. <laughs> can you? Can you hear me? No, I cannot hear you. I mean, yeah. Yeah, sitting it. I don't hear. Okay, 
No. What? No. No. I mean, we can barely hear you. Can barely hear you. There you go. But now when you speak, right, the, the thing goes back to you. Yes, the speaker Yeah. Foundation never understands. Sorry for the uh, strange uh, sound issues. <laughs> I'm still, we're still not quite sure what's happening. Uh, guys, we can hear you. Huh? I can hear you. Yeah, this one. Oh, this one. This one. Um, cool. So much. Well, while we are working out some of the the more uh, technical kind of issues. Um, would you guys like to do a quick round of introductions just amongst yourselves? Introduce yourself to each other? Yes, would yes. be good. Please go. Uh, Golf joined us yesterday, so he's all like ready and raring to go also. It's quite fun. You can just start your conversation anyway. Yeah. All right, Golf, you go first. Okay. Hi, both of you. Hello. <laughs> uh, my name is Golf. I'm from Thailand. Actually, now I'm uh, work in Chiang Mai and live in Chiang Mai too. Uh, and I would call myself as a theater artist, but mostly I do the 
producer part. Mm. Yeah. And I'm happy to meet you and I'm excited to exchange uh, the experience with you. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. <It's> next. <laughs> well, you can go next. Um. <laughs> Okay, hi, hello. Hi, Nabila, Gov, Jody, I'm Hope. My name is Hope Tinumbakan. I am from the Philippines. Can you hear me? Yeah, um, you're a little, uh, little crackly, but can hear you. Okay, I am from the Maguete City in the Philippines. It's somewhere in the middle, central part of the Philippines. And um, I am a theater uh, artist also. And I am in this organization called Youth Advocates Through Theater Arts. Uh, and I am a singer songwriter as well. So I write songs and play music. <laughs> so that's what I do. Okay, I think it's my turn. Hi, yes. guys. My name Hello. is um, I'm in my piano studio now. So I own a piano studio. I just started it about two years ago, I think. So I you know, this is my place. Welcome to my place. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's right. so cute. <laughs> yeah, so this is my space. I teach over here. And then sometimes like I have small performances here. Yeah, so um, I, I studied um, piano performance. Like I majored in classical piano, which is um, very unusual for a lot of Singaporeans because, you know, they always think that um, music is not something that... Um, you know, that can allow you to put food on the table. You can't earn that much using music, you know, that kind of stigma. But yeah, I decided to go against the currents and I decided to pursue music and then now I'm teaching. And then um, when I was still studying overseas, I did some volunteer work for the underprivileged. I was teaching them like very music and I realized that I really, really liked it. So I decided to do something similar in Singapore as well, but now I'm taking a sabbatical leave from it because it gets very tiring, you know, like you keep on asking people for funding and then they don't really believe you. And then at the same time, you are trying to earn money, like to put food on the table as well, you know. So it gets very tiring. So I, I took a step back a little bit as well. But yeah, very nice to meet all of you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Uh, Oh, we can hear you again. Uh, hear me again. Okay. Oh, there, you there we go. Um, I, I, just so you know, guys, I'm only coming through on the laptop. Okay. Anyway, uh, we'll continue to work on it. Oh, yeah. But let's get started. Um, thank you for coming in a little bit early. Uh, so just to let you know what's happening on in the background, we're actually at a theatre venue in Singapore at Theatre Works. I'm not sure if Nabila and um, Hope would know, or T Works, sorry, it's still adjusting to the new name change. Um, yeah, and so we've also got our technical team who were previously theatre artists, or I mean theatre technicians, so they're uh, retraining a little bit and learning how to work with the digital technology, which is, has been a process. So uh, thank you also giving them an opportunity to try new things also uh, and uh, deal with the, the new situation. Um, so just to give like a, a recap over what we've done over the past two days. Um, so we had our artist panel on Monday with a uh, different artist from uh, South ASEAN and Korea talking about what what community art is and what it looks like in Southeast Asia and in Korea and how that it is not only just about doing things on the ground but it is uh, a legitimate art practice that, that incorporates so many different fields and that it's a, a it is a an art form in itself that needs its own work. So this, these dialogues are all a part of the Connect ASEAN program, which the community corner is a small part of that, which looks at how 
community arts and how we can use art in order to gain access into the community. Okay, let me, uh, I'm getting a, a thumbs up. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes, wonderful. Okay, nice. All right. But it got a little bit Sorry. echoing. See? Okay, so the, the Community Corner program, we kind of designed it to develop sustainable and effective community art practices in ASEAN uh, with the involvement from the artist and from the Republic of Korea also. Um, and so today we're here talking about uh, youth and how arts can support youth as well. And so after today, we're hoping that the and the panels that after all these dialogues and all these exchanges that we'll be able to uh, continue to create some more works from this also in this new digital way. Nice. Uh, for those of you, I, I'll, since you guys have also introduced yourself, I will also introduce myself. Um, I think most of you kind of know us already, but uh, so I'm Jody. I'm the creative director of Art Salute, which is a nonprofit organization that looks at how arts is used to solve community issues. Arts and artists are used to solve community issues. And uh, yeah, we've been around for almost, heading towards 10 years, almost. They're quite long. So yeah, we do a lot of things with RCN as well. Mm. Thank you. Uh, so this program is, is brought to you, so Connect RCN is a part of the, uh, is sponsored by the RCN Korea Cooperation Fund in collaboration with ASEAN Foundation. And so a big thank you to ASEAN Foundation for making this all happen and everyone else. Wonderful. Okay, so let's get now with all the, the formalities done, let's get down to the, the meat of this. So uh, each of the artists work, I mean, each of you all work with youth in very like special and specific ways. So I think it'd be really good to to get an understanding of, of your work. And we've got a few presentations and then we can get down to our questions. Wonderful. Uh, let's start, should we start with your, we'll start on our home ground with Nabila from Singapore. Uh, would you like me to show your video first and then you can? Um, maybe I can share a little bit more about the video first. Okay. So um, yeah. as I mentioned earlier, when I was still studying in the UK, I worked with um, some groups of, uh, some underprivileged uh, groups and I realized that it was very fulfilling. It was a lot more fulfilling than performing normal classical music in a concert setting. You know, I'm very sure that a lot of people get a sense of fulfillment from that, but I found my fulfillment in doing that kind of volunteer work. So I wanted to recreate something like that in Singapore as well, because um, I acknowledge that there are certain segments of society in Singapore that do not have access to classical music or like high quality classical music. So um, yeah, I approached a beneficiary. I approached a boys home in Singapore and I asked them, hey, do you guys want to do this together? And they say, okay, so the first round, um, it was just normal music, like just a brief overview of what music was about. And then the second round of the project, I got them to learn how to play the gamelan. Yeah, so I outsourced to a, another company to teach them how to play the, uh, the gamelan. And it culminated in um, two performances um, at an auditorium. Yeah, and I think there were about 500 people who turned up for each concert. So yes, take it away, Jodie. Thank you so much. Wonderful. All right, uh, we're going to a screen share now. Just. Yeah, uh, Terence, it's okay. I can go to the screen share. Yeah. One moment. <laughs> okay. Let's go.
um, Gamelan artists that you were working with? Um, so there's this group of people called the Alunan Enterprise. They actually teach CCAs in Singapore, like mm. the actual curricular activities in Singapore. So they know exactly how to deal with kids that age. And they're mm. not kids, like, they're like 13 to 18 years old. So a little bit of uh, background about the participants. So they are all in a boys' home because of various reasons like drug abuse or beyond parental control. So they are all over there. Uh, some of them, they are placed there wrongly, like they're orphans, but then the orphanages in Singapore do not have space for them. So mm. that's why they are placed in uh, that welfare home. Oh, I see. Yeah, we, we took up about 20 kids to try out that program. And it was about 20 weeks long Yeah, to, to create that. Uh, there was a lot of um, blood, okay, no blood, lah. I mean, <laughs> a lot of tears and a lot of hard work that goes behind it. It's not perfect, you know, you can hear them rushing and I acknowledge that, you know, they're, they're just like, okay, okay, okay finish I, me. <laughs> I think that's the musician in you um, because, yeah, I think to a, a non-musician's ears, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> I'm sure we all can hear it. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a great performance and everybody understood where they were coming from that they all don't have music background and they're just there to try out something new and uh, we are all very appreciative of that. Yeah. Mm. Was there like a reason why you wanted to do uh, the more traditional music versus uh, classical? Right, so um, the first project that I did with the Welfare Home, um, it was just a brief overview, right? I mentioned uh, it was a brief overview of classical music, like Western classical music, um, Malay music, and also a little bit of fine arts, mm. like painting, drawing, that kind of fine arts. And then at the end of the program, I did a um, small survey and they said that they were interested in music and they were interested in Malay music in particular. Mm. I think it's because they wanted a sense of belonging, that welfare home, most of them are Malays, and they just wanted to be a bit more connected with the culture and I was, I was very appreciative of that. And I thought, okay, maybe the Western part, it was just a bit too far out for them. And they wanted something closer to home. So, um, yeah. And I decided to engage that company to help me out with it. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So the, the students got to kind of choose their own adventure in a, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Oh, that's really lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to Hope. Would you like to uh, introduce about your practice? Hi. Um... So I was, um, I am involved in this organization called YATA, which means Youth Advocates Through Theater Arts. Um, I've been with the, with the group for, I think, more than 12 years now. Yeah, so 12 years ago, I joined them. And um, we, we, this is a youth-based um, organization, theater group, so we work mostly with um, young people, children, and sometimes adults too. And um, we have various um, advocacies that we, that, we, um, that we promote or that we tackle in our organization. And perhaps I would uh, want to share the recent, the, one of the more recent ones. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the video of um, the Positive Discipline um, campaign, that we are, we are doing. Okay, I will bring that up for you now. Uh, Terence, okay. uh, share screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Or maybe I can discuss first, or should we sh show it first? Uh, I think we should be okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is the. Okay, here we go. And. Mahar Uan Oops Ya Mahar is a Ate Ang bina ng cellphone ba? Let's a good Ang bina ba? Musagit ko ron Ah E di salit nila Ah Pagpondo ko na mo Kabalamang namin ako sa radyo Si ate man na o Si ka ng piso Sa alagining ano gugi mong kwaon Ang bisa ni ba? Ipa kaon na ako ng cellphone ninyo ron Merlin Merlin Nga naman ma Pangbunali pagod ni imong mga anak. Galali sa pun anong unsa na ka ng taito. Nangagahiyan o gulo. Ate, Lucy, di ba nagsabot naman ta ng kabahin sa paggamit og cellphone? Di ba atong sabot na magtinabangay ta diri sa balay? 
Misud ba atong kahimtang ron tungod aning quarantine? Sa positibong disiplina, may respeto ang pagigugma. Mensahe gikan sa Philippine Educational Theater Association Advocate Right to Safety Zone o Youth Advocates Through Theater Arts. Una, sa positibong disiplina, may respeto ang pagigugma. Love it. I see um, you've got uh, uh, a guest star of uh, Dessa who was with us on, on Monday talking as well, which was very yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, because um, she, wanted, she wanted to play that grandmother part just in the video. Oh yeah, this, um, this um, campaign is, um, is a long, uh, has been with, uh, we've done this campaign for quite a long time now, I think for more than five years. But this recent one we did over like during the quarantine period. Mm. So if you can say with them and, and the actors, they are they were shooting it in their own homes and their own phones, and then we just like, put them together into like one video that looks like they're in the same house, but really uh, they did it on their own, and then we just put them together. So um, um, this is basically what we do. We um, we organize young people, so the actors there are members of our organization, and we um, engage them in different advocacies. And one of the recent ones is the, past, the, the video that I showed you is on positive discipline, which is um, to promote positive discipline and not uh, the corporal punishment that um, Filipinos are <clears throat> uh, used to. So um, uh, this is a campaign for online and also for radios. So basically, that's what we do here in Yapa. And um, uh, we do workshops, we do performances, but uh, uh, at the same time, we also like, study different uh, advocacies for the young people to also be involved in and be engaged. So basically, that's what we do. Mm. So the, the video was about, uh, like the campaign is using young people to talk to their parents about the issues that they're facing also. Yes, 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 exactly. Ah, that's very interesting. There's a, a few more photos here. Were you wanting to talk about those also or later? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I can also. Yeah, yeah, we can show them. Okay, give me one uh, Some of the works that I've done presently and before. Uh, Terrence? Wait, oh, share screen, okay. Let me just open this up quickly. I will shortly. Um, so basically, I'm sharing photos of um, my previous works with um, different groups of young people. And okay, this first one, uh, this the the kids in masks. These are children in conflict with the law. Is, um, sometimes we call them juvenile children. And uh, I worked with them for I think almost two years. And this was probably one of the most memorable and I would say the most um, challenging work that I've done with Yata. Mm. Um, uh, because as you may have, uh, as you may know, um, these children, um, the stigma on children in conflict with the law is, um, uh, is quite, um, uh, there, there's stigma among these children. and. Um, um, as, uh, allowing them to once again understand themselves, be able to speak about their own stories, and be able to uh, to connect with other children um, uh, was not um, simple for them. So it, it, it took some process, and we were uh, happy that we were asked to partner with the social welfare department to work with these kids. So yeah, uh, this this is our mask making um, exercise, and they were wearing their <laughs> their mm. finished products. Yeah. So just, and then to, get to, just to join the dots right. a little bit, so the the boys' home and juvenile delinquents are, are similar issues, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we get to the next one. Uh, this is a more recent <clears throat> excuse me, more recent um, project that I had. When the quarantine in the Philippines started, um, some of uh, our young people were, we didn't know what to do, really. 
So I uh, ended um, um, many of our talented children didn't know what to do at home. So they couldn't move, they couldn't go out. So one of my or one of these organizations that I'm involved in is called Cuadernos. We are a group of singer songwriters here in Makete. We created this online singing songwriting workshop for free. We offered it for free. It was a five day workshop for um, for these young people, these young singer songwriters, and it was very fruitful because um, <clears throat> we didn't know that you know because of this pandemic we would be able to teach these children. Now they are creating their own original music. Um, after the workshop, it's just uh, fun to see them being productive over the quarantine period. Mm. Let me go to the next photo. All right, certainly. Is the is there still heavy quarantine in in the Philippines at the moment, or in some areas? Yes. Some uh, right areas. now, in my city, it's still um, uh, MGCQ. So yeah, there's still, uh, it's, it's still we're still quarantine period basically. Mm, okay. Not as not as strict anymore. Uh, this one is with the, if you remember the um, Typhoon Haiyan, mm. that struck the Philippines back in, I think, 20, I think 2012. 2012, 20, so, yeah. Yeah. So this um, is a workshop for the survivors, for the youth surviving, the, who survived the Typhoon Haiyan in Tacloban in Leyte, in Bisaya. So we provided them creative. Um, creating arts for for healing and for psychosocial support. So uh, yeah, it was a, it was also an interesting uh, experience. For me. And maybe I want to switch one left. I uh, no, I have I have three <clears throat> photos. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Listen. So basically, that's what we do. We travel around the Philippines and give workshops to young people. Wonderful. Got it. many uh, work with many different organizations. Yeah, yeah. Also. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, go. Are you ready to, to do another presentation? Yes. Yes. But I, I think we can start sharing the skin. Can. Let me. Uh, oh, again, I am at the bottom. Can. Okay. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, thank you so much, Jody. No um, my organization name Makam Pom Foundation, and actually Makam Pom uh, have two operation. One is a, a foundation, and one is a company. So foundation we work and for non profit uh, mission something like that. But for the company is like we do the social enterprise, and we get the benefit to subsidize the foundation. It's like, I get the, something like that. Next, please. Okay, this is, now my, wait, sorry, huh? one moment. Okay. Don't know why I can't shift to the next slide. Uh, Terence, can I have some some help? <laughs> My PowerPoint is stuck. <laughs> oh, sorry, please. Hi, this is uh, Terence. He's the. Uh, <laughs> sorry, no. <laughs> That's fine. So, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Oh, how'd you do that? Okay. Wait. Let me. Just. Just. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this first. All right, maybe just we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just do that I won't go full screen because okay. I'm yeah. not sure what's happening. That's fine. It's oh. enough to see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we use theater as a medium to work uh, for social development and we have been started 40 years ago. Hmm. But I have joined Makampom to be like the the member of a Kampam almost like uh, 15 years ago. Mm. And a lot of social issues that we've been touching, like political conflict management, human rights and democracy, environment and educational, but uh, there's a lot, lot like we have been had, uh, doing the social issues, but th those 
goals that we are main focusing on. And now we have run by four departments. The first one is education, that we work a lot with uh, educator, lecturer or teacher in educational institution uh, from government or, or private sector, and also alternative uh, organization. And um, we have international department that we mainly focus on working with the uh, foreign artists or uh, social worker from, from other countries who live in Thailand also from abroad. Mm. And also we have community department that because Makam uh, Pong, we actually have two bases. One is in Bangkok, it's like the main center of Makam uh, of Pong office. And another place we have a space, it located in Chiang Dao district, Chiang Mai province in northern of Thailand. Actually this place we've been found uh, the same year that I attend to be the member of Makam Pong, because in that time we have a uh, very bad economic crisis in Thailand. So everything is going down, the price of everything is going down. So this land is very cheap. That is very lucky for my company to get this land. <laughs> because <laughs> nowadays it's crazy expensive. <laughs> but yeah. That's very beautiful. Oh, yeah. Very Actually, it, it, it is only like like five percent of the uh, of the area is like another area is more beautiful but oh. yeah <laughs> beautiful wonderful okay another one is uh theater department which is i am the theater program manager and we work a lot with the local artists and also work with the Bangkok Theatre Artist Network that we sharing uh, resources like uh, human or knowledge, even the platform between the Chiang Mai city and Bangkok city. And the act, activity, the, the program that I like to mention for this uh, talk is called Act Up. Act Up is the, pro the program that I create. Uh, before I create this platform, I have been researched uh, with a professional artist in Chiang Mai and in Bangkok. And also I have been uh, researched with the youth the young generation, young people in, in Chiang Mai society about the performing art scene in Chiang Mai city that what do they think, what do you need, what are you dreaming to have it, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's been a lot of process that I have been working with them before I create this platform. And so... Is this, is this Dao in the corner? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, wonderful. Another another theatre artist. But now she gets more beautiful now. Nah? Ah, no. Nah? <laughs> <laughs> and so the the identity of Act Up uh, fe uh, festival is we combine the performing art and and activism together because mm. the youth the young people, they love to involve in the art event, especially like theater or performing or dance, something like that. And also at the same time, they feel like talking about political, it feel, it feel cool, it feel fun for them. Like they are, because they are learning, right? And they are enjoy to learn from the new perspective, something like that. And 
So we cannot deny that the way that they are learning is it actually activism already is like social movement at the same time. Mm. So they love to express in the in the artistic uh, theater performing way, something like mm. that. So that why those two years I've been collecting the ideas, the dreaming, the struggle, or even the 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 thing that they think it been missed in in high society to mm. support the youth uh, empowerment per se. Mm. Something like that. What were and some of the the social issues that they brought up during the festival? Pardon? What were some of the social issues that they brought up that uh, they okay. talked about? So uh what the issues, right? So we uh for the participant group, the theater group that it been uh, joining to this festival, we have eight groups. Mm. Four is from professional artist group, and another four is from young uh, generation group. Mm. So, uh, for those eight groups, they have different issues. For the young one, the one group interested into the mental illness, mm. depression, and one group is uh, the broken family, and another one is freedom speech, mm. and another one education mm. failure in Thailand system something like that. Mm. Mm. But for for the for the uh, professional, they have very strong it too that they've been touching for over 20 years so we are not very like we we we, we can let them work by themselves mm. because we they are more professional that okay to to work alone something like that but the the main the main interesting point for this platform is i uh the the activity that i create on this platform, it actually uh, designed by three of us between Makam Pom, the youth, and the artist. Mm. So we three have the dream and the fear and everything that we want. We just offer and we put it into the same table together and we try to combine that how we can achieve that to 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 make everyone happy, to mm. to to make everyone to get what they need, something like that. Mm. So the facilitator that you are seeing, uh, she is actually the uh, oh, is very this, um, tip. Yeah, P tip. Ah yes. Uh, Auntie tip. She Auntie tip. <laughs> she is a shadow puppetry, mm. and she working over like almost. 30 years. Yeah, very long time. One, one of the things that she see from this platform, she said that I actually don't have any passion to give, to, to push for the new blood, like for the young people anymore. But this platform give me a, a new passion that, oh, I have a lot of experience. I got a lot of chance to see the world, to work, to get money, something like that. And when once she saw those kids' eyes and the way that they work in this project, she mm. feel like, okay, I have reborn again. I want to do something for the youth and make a new wave in Chiang Mai society, something like that. Mm. Oh, it's very inspiring. Is this, is this her shadow puppetry or? Yes. Mm, very beautiful. So, and and very interesting that uh, most of uh, art professional artists in Chiang Mai they never worked together before. Hmm. So because this is the very first, officially very first uh, theater festival in Chiang Mai. So the artist is the first time to meet up. They know each other from distance, something like that. But they never worked together. 
and once the youth see like all of the professional theater artists in Chiang Mai come to join in one platform, they feel like, oh, this is so powerful at the same, at the first step that we go, like, it's so big that we have a lot of big name people come to join together and we are young people, we can learn a lot from them, something like that. Mm. Very beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, it's very good to hear also that uh, to see young people being able to inspire the older generation to be inspired to take care of the young generation again. So, so it's nice, nice circle as well. Uh, I thought I might uh, open up the floor to, to you guys if you had any questions about any of the projects that you guys have talked about anything that you want to ask or clarifications or anything? Yeah. I am. Hello. Can I ask a question? Of course. Um, by the way, golf, the, the space was so beautiful. <laughs> I wish we have that kind of space. <laughs> Please come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but I want to, I want to ask if, um, how was the condition there during quarantine and if you were able to do some, um, activities or, or uh, did um was there um was there a problem there during the pandemic if were you able to were you able to work uh, but, but, um, uh, Michael uh, Air? Sorry. <laughs> it's okay were you able to continue what happened during covid uh, were you continuing to work or had to change or stop or what happened in in in, in thailand right yes so, in thailand <laughs> in uh, we in thailand we had three phase of covid pandemic mm. uh, the first one we cannot do anything for the first six weeks of uh, COVID pandemic in Thailand, it's been locked down. We, we, the activity that is like human contact to human is, is a no-no. All the theater is locked up, you know. So we cannot do anything for the six week, uh, first six week. For the second, the reopening country, we somehow can have a meeting or open the art space, something like that. The government said, okay, you can do, but you cannot let have, uh, you cannot have the audience more than 30 people or something like that. So it's a little bit, not a little bit, it's quite limitation to work, but at least we get more breathable to, to work something. But mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite freedom to do anything because in Thailand, it's almost 80 to 83 days that we don't have any infected in, in, inside of the country. Yeah. Good, good for you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. uh, any more questions from about the, the work or anything you want to know more about? Um, I'm particularly interested about Hope's um, the songwriting thing, the songwriting course. You had it online, is it? Yes, actually, I was going also. I was also going to ask you about the <laughs> possibility of doing online teaching. <laughs> yeah. So about your songwriting thing. So have you ever met the students before, or was it all the first time? The first time that you meet them is all online. Um, I would say I think. I've met only like 20% of them. Most of them uh, I only met online. So we made an online uh, um, submission of um, original songs. They submitted their songs and then we checked if they're ready for the workshop. Okay. And then we chose um, 10 for the first, uh, 15 for the first batch and then another 10 for the second batch. Nice. So most of them we only met and we only were able to to interact online. So we some of them we haven't even met yet until now. <laughs> but we're just in one city. That's so difficult. That's so <laughs> yeah. difficult. And the, the process was difficult also because, you know, working with technology and you know how music is, you know, how we teach music online is quite difficult. And 
because it's in a group setting. But it was very fun. It was so much fun. Do you use Zoom or do you use some other platform? Oh yeah, that was that's another issue in the Philippines because not all young people have access to into um to a decent internet connection and they don't have Zoom. So we only used Facebook. So what we did is um we created our um, module or, or our lectures through a video presentation. And then within the video, we have served questions that they answer or the exercises that they do say, um, together. We tell them, okay, the question number one, and then you do this exercise now, and then they do. So we, everything was in Facebook. We, we, we did everything in Facebook. <laughs> it was tough, but it was, but it was productive. It was productive. Wow, so if everything was on Facebook and then when they asked you questions, was it through the comments section? Yeah, we created a special Facebook group, oh. a page, a group, and then at the same time we have a group chat. So uh, for immediate immediate questions, we do in the group chat, but for exercises, we do in the Facebook group. Oh. So yeah, we found, we found our way around this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually you... interesting. I'm interested in, in like, if you are, um, if you have done something like online teaching of music, or are you interested in doing it? You know, we, right. um, many of our students would be very happy to, <laughs> to, no, to I get this. In Singapore, was that there was a period called the circuit breaker where we were not allowed to do a lot of things. We were, it was, it was a nicer word than lockdown because lockdown had its connotations right like oh no our country is going to die soon but <laughs> you know so we called it the circuit breaker so what happened during the circuit breaker was that all tuition centers all enrichment centers had to be stopped so because they were limiting the social contact right so i couldn't teach anymore and then um i did approach my students and asked them whether they wanted to learn via zoom so it was very interesting actually. Most of the Singaporean parents did not want to have their lessons over Zoom because to them, oh. you know, it's all about one-to-one. -one. Like I need to be sitting next to the kid to be teaching them exactly how it works. But then I told them, you know, there's the theory aspect. There's also like um, the listening aspect, you know, things that we can't do in that one hour. Usually in Singapore, um, piano lesson is about an hour each. So I told them about that, right? Like we can do other things. But they said, no, it's okay. Mm. We'll just wait. But my international just... parents, like my Chinese parents, my English parents, they're okay with it. Because to them, they understand mm. that there's more to it than just playing. You know, there's the theory aspect. So I was, I was getting them to do homework. I will take my iPad and Apple Pencil and then I will circle vigorously all the wrong things that they're doing. You know, this... Things like that, which makes it a lot easier as well. Um, and then some of them, they will actually record themselves playing and they will send it to me and then I will comment from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, yeah. Tried, we tried doing Zoom and then they played something. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness, it was, it was just horrible. Yeah, I mean, what are, what are <laughs> the, the issues with doing it online? Like, First and foremost, is it difficult? Unless you have like, unless you have amazing miking system, mm. then you'll be able to hear the nuances. Like whether it's soft, loud, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. It will only work if you have great miking system. But most of the time, the kids will just use iPad or laptops. And you can't hear all of these. Uh, yeah. So I only wanted to teach the beginner kids or like the lower grades so it was more of just making sure that they are practicing that they are learning their notes so that when i can resume face to face i know already what i can work on but it was also difficult because sometimes they're too small so when they put their ipad on the piano stand right you can't see anything you can't see their fingers you, you it's just no <laughs> Like trying to talk to your auntie when all you can see is the forehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one of them is a four-year-old and she plays on a grand piano. So she puts her iPad on the grand piano stand, right? I could only see her forehead, you know. Because she's so tiny. <laughs> so it was like, like that. Then yeah. I, um, can you please move your iPad? <laughs> okay. Um, so we're 
the, the tech team needs like about a five minute break to, to work on things. I mean, feel free to like keep on sharing stories about your, your issues with, with <laughs> teaching. Um, but yeah, they're just uh, gonna take a, a second to do some stuff. But um, yeah, feel free to keep on talking and then we'll, we'll come back in about five minutes, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we, we continue talking. Yeah, we can just continue talking, it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in like how we can like um, share in, in an online platform because um, I think it would oh. be good. Yeah. No, um, there's no mic. Oh, I need to talk to them. Oh. Yeah. It's not us actually. There hmm? might be sounds problem somewhere there. Oh, I see. Yeah, some, someone cracking, cracking very bad. Ah, uh, there, there's this hope. <laughs> hope side, yeah. Probably yeah. me. All right. I'll, I'll, so, I'll... so maybe hope when, like, mute uh, his... Yeah, wait. Okay. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> oh, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Oh, hey. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, uh, all right. Sorry, if I, if I talk a bit loud, it's because, yeah, um, the volume is not adjusted for Jody. Um, so basically, there's quite a lot of crackling somewhere. So we just need to know where is it from. Mm. So maybe what I need is maybe everyone to just uh, slowly mute your mics and then we slowly isolate the problem. You can unmask. Uh, okay. If you're talking to them, right, you can unmask. Okay, unmask. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then now talk to them. Check with everyone. Talk to them with the sound check. So, hello everyone. Uh, yeah, if you could just um, take off your, uh, unplug your earphone and plug it back because they, uh, you will hook yourself to solve the cracking sound. Okay, everyone good? Okay, you test it again, yeah? Unmute. Yeah. Uh, we will talk a bit about. No. Can we? Okay. Did you guys get into which came first, the art or the, the teaching? And which do you prefer? I guess is my question. Do I prefer uh, the art or the teaching? And which one came first? Which one came first? Two questions. Wow. Which one came first? I don't know. I was I was forced to learn the piano, but <laughs> How come your mom want you to learn piano? Oh, I don't know. She just decided one day, like, oh, you're going to learn the piano. I was four years old. So I didn't really have much of a say back then. Mm. Yeah, but I'm very thankful for that because mm. it turned into a career. It turned into something very fruitful. So thank mm. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think I only realized this when I was studying because I was studying in like a proper conservatory where everyone lived and breathed music, right? So I realized that I do enjoy playing the piano. I do enjoy making music and the art and all that. But teaching was a lot more fulfilling. Hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, you know, like the, the joy of making an artwork is there but I still prefer teaching. Because I realize that when you play the piano, right, you're just cooping yourself up in a room and you just practice for eight hours a day and you don't meet anyone at all. And I'm a very social person. So I need to see people. I need to talk to people, you know. So <laughs> eight hours in the practice room, no. <laughs> it's the introvert versus extrovert dilemma. Yeah, yeah, I cannot. Mm. That, that's just not for me. Because I still remember when I was still in school, the, the practice rooms are quite small. Mm. They all look a little bit like a jail. You know, there's, the window is extremely tiny and then we're just in there all alone. <laughs> yeah, nice. I mean, you hope, like, which one came first for you? Or do you see them as different or 
the same or? Well, well, we have uh, the performers first. I recently joined uh, Yata Group as a performer, and then was later um, uh, trained to also teach. But right now, I think I I would want to teach a little bit more, mm. and then perform on some of them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Performer first. <laughs> And Ghost, did you start as, I, I know you started as volunteer first, yeah? Uh, and now, which one you prefer, the performing or the teaching? Mm, in my mind, I would love to start with the performance, but in realistic, <laughs> they push me into the management and the facilitating process, designing, whatever, because everyone wants to be the performer, want to be like on stage, you know? And okay, I, I mean, I see that, okay, they wanna dance, they wanna talk, they wanna do that, okay. That, but no one go to buy that, no one go to <laughs> manage this, you know? <laughs> okay, I do, I will do. <laughs> but it actually, act up, it changed my life also, it changed my life career because I actually found myself that okay I I'm so much enjoy to be the producer like once they finish the festival on the on the stage right everyone uh, feel up on the stage together but I'm the only one who was at the back stage but I feel and I see them on the stage I feel like I'm happy already I, I don't want to be on the spotlight, I want to be in, on here. This is my my position that I love, and I feel like okay, this new me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's a bit the same for me also because so when I first started in the arts, I wanted to do theatre, and so I start I, I studied theatre and um, uh, worked with a, a theatre company for a while, but then the I discovered that I didn't really like acting because you're in the spotlight and doing, you know, everyone focus on you. But then when I discovered puppetry, that made more sense to me because you are on stage, but no one is looking at you. Everyone only look at the, at the puppet. And so for me, uh, like facilitating is a bit like puppetry because you're, you're putting in the work to make the, the puppet shine, the other person shine. Mm. Mm. Yeah, which for me is more more comfortable and yeah, more more rewarding. I like performing because I get to wear nice clothes and like proper makeup. <laughs> so vain, right? But I mean, oh, yeah, it's, it's the highlight, uh, it's the pinnacle of every single performance, you know, like you really dress up and you look the best because you know that people are going back to watch you. So I find a lot of fulfillment in that. But if I were to compare between that and teaching, then obviously teaching mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it was very funny. Um, yeah, I ha had to go through so many um, masks. You can't even see on there, but like so many masks during this um, conference because I uh, have to wear makeup for the light, but then it's so uncomfortable wear the makeup and the mask at the same time. It feels very, like, very wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I also want to ask, like, do you think that, what, what is the reason why you want to, why you end up working with youth? Like, okay. And, okay, so they're, they're, they're going live, so I question will also be live also. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I guess I see, like, with a lot of your stories, you start off learning arts from, from young. And then is that one of the contributing factors of, of wanting to teach youth also? Or what is the, the motivation for, for wanting to work with, with youth, for you personally? Um, can I respect? Uh, sure. You can go first. Okay. Um, I think the best motivation that I had also my personal experience on how on how the arts 
older me and how they are helped me through a lot of difficult times in my youth. And this is something that I want to share to also to, to allow other young people to experience it. Because um, um, I don't think I would have done, I would, I would have survived a lot of things without the art. The art really, really saved me in many situations. So, and I think that was this was the day that I learned. But I know uh, the power, of the power, of, the power of creative, creativity mm. in development, mental health, also in going through life. You know. mm. That was my. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, just was unclear whether you were finished or not. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the, <laughs> one of the really beautiful things about art and theatre especially is it, it allows you to imagine possibilities for yourself and put yourself in different roles. So it kind of breaks that, that thinking of, I am from here, I do this, um, you can imagine being something else which I think helps uh, a lot of people move to yeah, a new place in their life. Mm. Yeah, Golf, you, you raised your hands like a, a good student. <laughs> For me, my motivation is not so different from hope. Mm. No, because I, because I, I realized myself how transformation I have got since I start to do theater work with uh, with Masampom actually, you know? and and because of believing oneself, that look at the past that you were before and look at the moment that you are now is so huge different, even. I myself, I still, I still surprised that oh, I have became so far. I have changed into the positive way so far. But it is not because of I'm good at it, but it because of I'm in the environment that it been designed well, thinking by the people surrounding me. It's not because I'm I'm talent because. I'm not talented, but I'm beautiful. <laughs> yes, but it's because it's because a well preparation, a well thought, a finished thoughtful process that people in Makampom and another organization that I've been involved for over 10 years that they believe the same thing that youth can make a change by soft power like art. Mm -hmm. So once I got this idea and I feel like this is how this is why I have to start at up mm -hmm. with the young group. Because once because like over five years, during the five year past five years, I got a lot of uh, uh, chance to go to to different countries. I got a lot of scholarship because even I'm so poor like we don't have very su financial support from the family mm -hmm. for doing anything much but I got a lot of uh, like good opportunity to see like a big platform and to see a big name in the world something like that and mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like I'm lucky in that time but I feel like I want to let my friend I want to let my young people in Chiang Mai city to see what I have I have and I've been seeing right now. Mm. So it's like, okay, go, go back to do act up, something like that. Mm. Do you think it's, it's when it comes to, to activism and wanting to talk about yeah, social is, issues, yeah. do, you, do you think young people uh, respond easily to this or is it something that takes them some time? Does my question make sense or? Pardon? 
uh, my question is for ACT UP with activism uh, and talking about social issue. Is it something that the young people respond very easy to or they need some, it, it takes some time for them to understand or to want to talk about the issue? Uh, the first thing that I think about making the social issue into the into the process it's not because i am interested to social issue those stuff and i try to put into their brain but i believe that uh design thinking for say uh will help them will make them to critical the structure of the society and to go back to see their experience past experience that become before before became them right now hello and okay so can so can hear you and what what make to be them like this so the process actually will let them see the social issue that they are they are actually focusing on with uh, uh being know that they they know or not they they, they might know oh, that can you hang on for one second you're you're crackling up quite a lot let me just check one thing uh is there Okay, can you try talking again? Hello, one, two, three. Uh, yeah, just you're breaking up a little bit. So maybe uh, talk slowly. <laughs> okay, can you hear me well now? Mm, it's okay. Okay, so I think because I don't try to put the social issue on them, so mm -hmm. I don't try to force them to believe what I'm believing but I provide the process. I provide the way of thinking to critical the issue by themselves to, to explore their experience or the thing that they're focusing on. So it, it is actually like a playground for them to hang out, to enjoy. And when once they feel like they enjoy doing art, and also at the same time criticize the society, they will feel like, oh, this is, this is actually what I'm interested in. Mm. Something like that. Mm, mm, yeah, giving them, uh, yeah, really giving them a, a chance to express their voice and, and building the confidence that, they, that their opinions and their perspective is important and allowing them to to share it also, I think, yeah, is really important. Hmm. Uh, Nabila? Uh, I think for me, the reason why I want to work with youths is because mm. um, I feel like I should give back. I have been given the um, opportunity to try out new things, you know, things that, uh, I mean, we all know that classical music is very expensive and we all know that sometimes art can get quite expensive. So, um, having the privilege, understanding my privilege to do that um, is propelling me to want to give back to um, the youths. And hopefully, even if they don't pursue anything arty, they will be able to build up their resilience, their hard work, you know, all those softer skills that might not be able to, um, they, that might not come as easily when, when they are in school. Uh, you know, uh, mm. resilience in terms of, um, making something and being able to see the results rather than just the academic resilience. So yeah, that's my uh, main aim for working with youth. And I feel that um, youth, they will actually listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's easier. It's easier for you to control. You know, because I, I just want to know my target audience as well. <laughs> I, I feel that like I am able to speak their language and uh, my personality allows me to communicate with them pretty well uh, and I feel that 
you know, some people, they, they're just patient enough to be able to talk to, I don't know, senior citizens or, or mm. youths, right? So, uh, I understand that my patience does not lie when talking to senior citizens, so I will not delve into that. <laughs> yeah. but I'm just going to concentrate on youths. <laughs> Yeah. That's my very honest answer. <laughs> yeah, I think you get to a certain point where um, actually working with, with senior citizens is a little similar to working with youth. Like when they get to a certain point, they get very excited about trying new things. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. So there's like one project that we do in the, in the hospitals or yeah. uh, getting volunteers to, to teach art and especially for Singaporeans who uh, don't, didn't get so much chance to, to play with art when they were younger. Yeah. You Getting a chance to use coloured pencils and paints is, is almost like working with, with youth again. It's very yeah. interesting. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's where the term young at heart kind of comes into play. Uh, as long as you're, you're curious and you're open and you're wanting to, to try new things, I think that's the, the really important part. Mm. So in terms of education and what part i mean education and, and arts education obviously have some kind of, of crossover but where does arts in particular really help to support youth in in their in their needs obviously they have very different needs in comparison to you know even the young at heart right and I guess uh, if you have any examples of uh, what, are, what are some ways in which the arts really help to support the, the softer side of things or you know, in terms of when mental health was sort of brought up, the, their social emotional needs. Um, I'd be really curious to see, to hear um, if you have any specific examples of, of ways in which you've tried to address some of these issues within, within the work. So I think like the the boys that I work with, the ones who uh, are or were in the welfare home, right? Um, by giving them this project, this art project, whereby everyone had no access to it initially, you know, they didn't do it um, in school. So there's a shared experience. They all know that they're starting from ground zero. So whatever issues that they have outside, they just leave it behind and then they, they start anew. So I think that helps a lot with their confidence as well. They yeah, are like, it just keeps on. They're like, everyone, Jodi, you okay? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so I think it's because um, they know that everyone is starting from ground zero, so they're a bit more confident to try out new things and confident to make mistakes as well, which is very important, you know? Like, we, we all should know that it's okay to make mistakes that it's perfectly fine and we need to understand how we can get over that mistake as well. Making mistakes is good, acknowledging that you have made the mistake is important and how do you grow from it? So I think that um, that ground zero was very important when I dealt with these kids and other than that, you know, it, it helps with their uh, mental well-being as well and emotional well-being. You know, they are, some of them, they have anger management issues and being able to express themselves through the music was very important as well, I felt. Yeah. Uh, uh, other people continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to turn the floor to the next person. Sorry, my, um, my earphones were like dying, so I had to change the battery. Um, yeah. And then I was on mute. Anyway, uh, yes, next. Uh, anybody else have anything else? But I, I... I totally agree with Nabila um, mm. uh, because um, in creativity or in the arts, um, we get to try many things. We get to mm. have fun, even if we tackle big um, issues. And I think what's important is also for them to understand that there are many possibilities. And through, through the arts, we can try these possibilities. What if this and what if that? And um, it is important for the young people to be able to use their imagination and not, you know, because with all the big problems or issues we have in this, in, in, the, in the community, in society, in the families, and sometimes the imagination is suppressed. 
And I think that's when a lot of even bigger issues come in. So when when the young when the young people are allowed to use their minds, their their bodies, their voices to express, to share, to try, commit mistakes, and you know, be able to just just try different possibilities. And I think uh, it's a very healthy practice, and I think the arts can help that can help in that. Mm. I. Oh, okay. Next. Next step. Ah, oh, great. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I think rehearsal is a really interesting thing to. Uh, we don't often get a chance in our day-to-day -day lives to practice something again and again, uh, and often there's that barrier where if you try something once. You know, if you, you go to a coffee shop and then you embarrass yourself at the coffee shop, then you don't want to go back to that coffee shop again because it's, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, a lot of art is about doing the same thing again and again and trying different options and having that space to, to try again and again. Mm, very powerful. Mm. Mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. I agree with all of you that it art actually helping youth for like empowerment into like uh, active learning, active learner all the time, something like that. And also, I think it, it lets them to be like, a citizen to practice the democracy system mm. all the time because art it needs diversity it needs the colorful it needs the differences to make its innovation you know so in the process making art or even during the learning process they will realize that everyone is value in the process mm. but it's just time and space we have to manage yeah something like that so yeah the, be okay. the beautiful okay. stuff okay. from 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 uh working with youth is is like let them practice the the, the democracy lifestyle also uh yeah, I, I really like your point about the democratic process. Uh, I think there's also that element of performance that's really important, where it actually gives that feedback of being a part of a community. When we sit in front of someone and, and present, it gives an opportunity for everyone to be able to come all together. And it's definitely something that we would miss during the COVID times because it means that we can't yeah it means that we can't come together as a community as much as as we'd like to i'm getting cables pulled out of me hello yes i can hear myself wonderful <laughs> lots of magic this is also like the very strange thing with uh the, the digital also because in in theater and performance we we really uh no can you yes there we go again okay cool <laughs> yes the digital medium there's like so many other people running around that you don't see anyway um all right moving on ah yes that was the point that i was going to make about especially working with underprivileged youths who often are not able to have a lot of choice in their in their lives so when it goes from school where you're constantly having to get told what to do you have to follow a certain regimen even into to working lives where you're always under a boss who who tells you what to do that ability to go into a more collaborative space i think is very enriching also mm. i guess i wanted to kind of ask about you know because we're here as a part of an ASEAN project of youths all across, well, artists all across these, these 10 nations and also 
incorporating artists from Korea also, which is a, you know, uh, there's a lot of art inspiration that especially our young people get from, from the, the Korean uh, culture as well. Um, but yeah, I was wondering like what kind of value or, you know, do, do youths or young people understand about ASEAN? What is there to, to kind of benefit from these sorts of collaborations? Is it, what kind of value do you see in maybe bringing you, youths especially to, to be collaborating together in this kind of way across countries? I think definitely the social capital, like being able to interact with people from other backgrounds, other countries, other cultures is very interesting as well. So I deal with a lot of international students and they come to Singapore because their parents are experts, their parents moved here, you know, so they are used to going to an international school and hanging out with people from different backgrounds. However, most of my Singaporean students they only hang out with Singaporeans. So I think that that is not a very good representation of the, what the world is like and being mm. able to collaborate you know, with uh, people from different backgrounds, especially through a medium like art, anything at all is very interesting because um, you know, there's the space, there's the safe space to create, there's the safe space to collaborate and also to learn about each other. So I think that is very beneficial for youth. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I think even within our own societies, we kind of can, can come into little bubbles itself. Like mm. I've yeah. you know, definitely had Singaporean friends who, you know, even don't get much uh, exposure even to other races within Singapore, let alone you know other cultures outside of Singapore. So, starting sometimes being international is a little bit more exciting than than your next door neighbour, but at least encouraging that yeah that conversation. Mm. So, hope I know you uh, dropped out for a little while there. <laughs> <It's okay>. I'm sorry, disconnected. <laughs> No problem, it happens. No, we were just uh, What talking... happened? <laughs> we're just talking about uh, what value youths might get from uh, communicating with other cultures around ASEAN or even um, other youths from Korea. Mm. And whether it's possible to collaborate. Mm. Or whether, you know, what kind of challenges also, uh, or, you know, might come across from, from these sorts of That is something that I am very interested in actually. Mm. Am I cutting off? No, you're okay. Actually, you're much yeah. better. Uh, yeah, I was saying, oh really, uh, I was saying that was something, that is something that I'm very interested in, um, especially that um, Yata was able to join the um, Asian Youth Theatre Festival in Singapore for, mm. and in Malaysia. And the, the level of um, awareness of our young people from, from Riata, from Dumaguete, when they joined uh, these international festivals or Asian festivals was really widened, was really like, uh, was even, in more, even more enlightened about the, the work that other, other young people do from, from outside the country that they can also learn from. And um, I think, there's a lot more to learn, not only in our own community, from outside the country, from other countries, from their practices. And it's also good to see similarities and differences and how we can learn from, from all these. So, and I, I think this is something that I realized when, I, when the pandemic happened, when the quarantine happened, that um, we thought we are too far, but now we're getting too near. We are actually getting closer and just seeing the possibilities and how we can work online as a, as a starting point. And maybe in the future when we are allowed to, we can, we can connect like from uh, um, in person. Mm. Yeah. I don't know I if know. I'm making sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's allowed us to operate a little slower where because we can't be together, we have to invest more time in, in conversation first before we move to action. Um, 
and hopefully this will increase everyone's uh, ability to to listen also which is a, a skill that mm. i think maybe uh, needs needs some working on in these times also mm. uh golf did you have any thoughts uh i have two dimension of it mm. one is a social dimension uh i think to connect with the ASEAN community uh, by working with youth, it actually <clears throat> it actually uh, uh, forced them, forced us to identify ourselves more. Mm. Not because that, not because of we are we are joining the ASEAN community in the uh, art, youth, network, something like that. We are not trying to present the thai present the real Thai standard, whatever, stuff like that. But we have to show, we, we have to get to know that who you are and why you have to connect with them and what is the connection between you and them and what is became them. So it's it's is a big 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 question for them to before they get to uh, connect or even during the connecting something like that it it always uh, force them to study in different uh, dimension like like study in the so social way or study economic way study in like uh, uh, geography way, something like that, or even like culture way. Mm. So, so I think it it's gonna be more impact for for the movement that if we have if we connect together. Mm -hmm. And also another dimension is the, the economic way, because it's not I'm I'm not I'm not thinking about making money. Because like we are more people, we are more country, we can make more money, not only that way, but I think it's about if we have a big com uh, we join the big community together, it's more power to negotiate mm. the space in globalization area, you know mm. because. As we see now, Korean interested to us, Japan interested to us, something like that, or uh, Europe or America interested to us, not because of they have been visited every corner already, <laughs> but it's because we are sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sexy means it's like you are attractive, you are mm. unique, you are, you are interested it is interesting mm. to to get to know and the way that you culture together in 10 country or more than that it's it's very interesting to them so mm. if you combine together and work together that means you have more power to 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 get the direction of your your identity also mm. The other cannot steal your identity because you are standing on your identity and voice out that this is me, this is my friend, this is us. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, and identity plays such a, a big part in, I mean, especially, I mean, bringing it back to youth again. Um, and in terms of wellness, your ability to understand yourself is, is really a a powerful way in order to be able to look after yourself also and and know where your your boundaries are in terms of what you you can and cannot deal with um yeah it's very interesting and there's almost a, a solidarity also because uh, often uh, especially in in southeast asia a lot of our media and a lot of our, our content that we consume uh, comes from international everybody watches the the movie from hollywood and and everywhere else and we think that sometimes it's 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 easy to forget that uh our, our 
neighbors also share a lot with us as well. And I think art is a really good way to have that solidarity. So when, you know, I think it'd be very interesting for, for Singapore youth to see that uh, youth in Thailand are talking about what it's like to have, have depression and, and mental health issues. Uh, that's, I think this is not something that, that we necessarily think about is, is really universal, not just in, in you know, East versus West, but also within our own countries. There, there are these, these issues that, that can bring us together also. Yeah. Uh, we're kind of heading towards like the last little bit of our uh, discussion. So I did want to open it up to the, the floor again as well. If you guys had any other things that you wanted to talk about, any questions you wanted to ask each other again. Do you guys have any idea how we can work together? I'm just going to say it. <laughs> Find money first. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Mm. No, I mean, it's a very important factor. Yeah, definitely in order to... Mm. I think, I, I, I think to, to respond to your question, mm. Nabila, about how to restart the first kick off, I think we can share, we can share what is your personal dream, what is your group dream, what is your organization direction, and what is your struggle or challenge that you are, uh, are trying to overcome this. And if we know, like four of us know each other deeply about actually each one of us want to go this way and different direction, but somehow we have some connection together. I think those fine line connection can make it into another mission to work together. Yeah, that is a good question. What what are we where where do we really want to <laughs> to go? Mm. And um I think uh, as far as our organization is concerned, what what we dream is really um what we dream of is um to be able to have a dialogue and sharing which is really focusing on on young people and what they what what they have to say and what they have to share, because uh, in my experience with um, uh, festivals like that, uh, sometimes it's too much like a competitive spirit of this is what we can present, this is what we can show, this is what we have. More than this is what I can share and this is why I shared it in the first place. Why did I start to do it and what does it mean to me and then. We, we can be able to really create a dialogue among young people and how the arts were able to affect them um, uh, in their personal lives, in their mental health, and like that. So I think that would be a good, um, that would be a very interesting um, thing to look forward to having. Uh, Kelp, do you have a uh, would you share also like what your what your dream is for for your work? My dream work. What is your <laughs> yes your dream work? <laughs> what is your 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 dream like? If if you could do anything, if you know, at the end of the day, what is the thing that you would love to to see? I want, actually, no, I did, this dream has been working on already. Uh, I want to see the artist or the art educator or anyone who use art as the uh, equipment or to, to be as a career mm. to have a, a stable income, stable mm. salary. <laughs> This is salary is just a surface need that I'm um... Hello. Yes, go back. Okay. 
And the salary that I just told is just the surface need that uh, the whole dream that I have because I think about I want to see the ecosystem, art ecosystem in Thailand that culture and society cares about the art creator, something like that. So I want to see them not struggle to find, to find money to, for a living. Mm. Mm. But this is very hard work that we have to work on. But right now, I am the core team to work with the parliament that we try to push the policy that uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, how the government could help the art industry in Thailand. Mm. So we have to face the short and long term. The short one, like you need to pay for the artist because the artist in Thailand is not Korea. It's just a freelance job. Mm. But this is a month of the number of the people who work as the artists in Thailand. But they are very struggling, especially for income for living. Mm. So you need to help them. So this is the much the 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 um the number of the money that we need for each month for just so far, something like this for a short term. But for the long term we need the ecosystem that how could not only like we have only income but we can continue to make the art in uh, creative activity mm. all the time mm. but this is have to be a conversation and dialogue between uh, artists and government and uh, private sector all the mm. time something like that yeah Reminds me of, I'm not sure if you, you saw, but there was a, a bit of a, a controversial uh, survey that was done in Singapore during the circuit breaker, which was a survey on what is the most non-essential uh, industry. And uh, number one was uh, the arts. Um, and yeah, I think- I'm it, so tired of hearing that. <laughs> it's true, but um, I think, Definitely something that we are, uh, and I think it's, it's a fair thing for us to be thinking about in terms of, you know, what, what value do we bring to, uh, especially during this kind of time. But I think if anything, the conversations that, that, that we are having now and, you know, even the, the conversation that we have today is, is talking about how essential and really important the work that you all are doing, but it's also about thinking how are we able to present that and instill that into not only our audiences, but also the, the top people as well. So I'm very excited to have uh, all of you participating in this because I think it's a, a very, it, not often do we get to see community artists participating in such big events. Um, and Yes, it makes me very excited. This is, this is my dream about that the artists are not only seen for the, you know, presenting in, in theatre or gallery um, and that those artists who don't present in big theatre or nice gallery or in big concert hall, that they are only the professional, but also that there is a lot of skill and a lot of hard work and a lot of, of value, not in, in involving the community and in doing good work for society. Mm. Yeah. Any thoughts from you, Nabila? I think my dream is just to be able to give access to people about mm. the arts. Access is very, very important. Whether or not they pursue it, you know, that's that's a different subject altogether because I feel that the arts is more than just about practicing it, but also the soft skills that we learn from it, like, you know, resilience, hard work, being able to um, accept failure as well. You know, so, and arts is always about, like, trial and error, and then sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, and then we just take it in our stride. Of course, there'll be days when we'll just cry 24 hours, but...
you know, then we just get up and we'll do something else out of it, right? So I think being able to expose that to people is very important as well. And um, ultimately, if there's more artists in the world, that means that we are more in touch with our emotions, hopefully, and that will be able to create more meaningful conversations and um, being okay with not being okay. <laughs> Yeah. That's a very valuable point. I think uh, a lot of people, especially during this time, have been struggling to, to deal with, to process all these new things that are happening. And you know, maybe it's not a topic we talk about enough in terms of the catharsis that, that art provides us also of being able to cry for 24 hours straight and then be able to, to put it together as something that allows us to move forward also. Very, 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 very valuable. Um, yeah, I mean, how, I mean, we've talked a lot about how uh, the, the digital side of things have made it very difficult. Um, do you foresee that, you know, collaborating digitally is something that's exciting, difficult? What, what would be the challenges around that, um, especially if there is a desire to incorporate youth to come into this online platform? among different countries also? And what might be the, the boundaries or exciting things that come out of it? I, I think... think <laughs> go, 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 go. I think it's very exciting, of course. Like every single art project is extremely exciting, but then the kind of problems that we will be facing, uh, some of it we might not even know that it's a problem until it surfaces. You know, like uh, right now, uh, when I deal with choirs, teachers all think, like the schools all think, oh, virtual choir is just you're recording it with your phone and then someone puts all the videos together, that's it. But no, <laughs> there's sound engineering of it, you know, being able to synchronize the faces, the music, and then like the words as well, and also the microphone levels. People don't think about that. So I think um, it's not their fault because maybe they just have not been exposed to it and we artists, we, we know that that's what happens behind every single video that we produce. Um, so there's that part about managing expectations as well. And um, I think the youth, kids, they are just a bit more willing to try out new things. So if we explain to them like, hey, you know, it's not as easy as you think it is. It's not just putting videos together. You know, then I think they'll be like, all oh, right, okay, I never thought about it. Sure, let me see what I can do to help. And everyone understands that this is a, we're just understanding what this new life is like. It's a new normal, you know, I hate to use that word. Yeah, it's <laughs> a new normal, unprecedented time, mm -hmm. you know, all those buzzwords now. But being able to try out something new together regardless of age is something that's quite comforting as well mm. because no one knows what we are doing <laughs> we all don't know what we are doing we're just living each day by day you know so i think um, that's one of the exciting parts of it as long as we remind ourselves that it is exciting and not something that is demoralizing yeah yeah uh, definitely something uh, we have to remind ourselves also is, you know, our art forms, like we took years to learn our, our art forms the way that they are. And now how much longer is it? Like we have to give ourselves time to learn the, the new art form of, of the digital communication. It's not going to happen so quickly. Mm. Yeah. It, it's funny because um, we were, we talked at the, all at the, at the same time, and I was about to say exactly the same thing. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, most interesting part here is that we don't know really what the problem is gonna be, and I think um, it's a, it's it's a new journey, it's a new challenge for us. And I think what's interesting also is that at least based on our work in, in our projects during the quarantine is you you also get to discover how the young people are actually very resilient and how they are also being very creative and you, they'll, they'll just surprise you of what they can do using technology and i think it is a good um i think it's it's also a good thing and that um that i mean the, the 
these ideas of the, of you know using technology to connect and and it would be also nice for the young people to be able to make friends to make to be able to share ideas online and then maybe in the future when the time allows then we can like go meet and greet in person or something. Yeah, I think uh, meeting people in, in person has taken on a, a, a special new meaning. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I think uh, we'll probably enjoy, especially theatre and live music, a lot, a lot more than we, than we used to. Mm. True. Uh, golf? I agree, Ina, that um, once when I, I have a meeting with the Act Up Network with the youth and I propose a new idea to them that what if we have the workshop online and everyone, what? <laughs> no! <laughs> because during the COVID pandemic, they have to study even in, their, in school or in university, you know they all have to study online. So we feel really like, oh, it again, online again, because they have taste the life experience mm. that is actually giving a meaningful uh, lesson learned for them. Mm. But digital life station, it just a channel for them to get to know, but it's not the whole life of them. They get to know this and that is make uh, them see that, okay, that's why we have to make the theater, we have to make the uh, any art activity that give a life experience for human and human, something like this. Mm. 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 Yeah. It's very exciting. There's so much uh, I, I think um, it kind of reminds me of you know, when you, that first time that you, you hop onto a plane, if you're going somewhere else, it's just this mixture of fear and excitement, but also, you know, it, you know that it's going somewhere and you know that you're probably going to get there, but it's that all these new sensations that you have to get through and it's partially exciting and it's partially boring, um, but <laughs> you get there eventually. Mm. But I guess I'd also like to, I mean, we've got another conversation this afternoon, which we'll also be talking about youth and education um, and youth needs. Uh, and also, you know, it's larger, you know, people who are also involved in sustainability and, and community work also. I guess I'd like to invite you to share any thoughts that you'd like to share with the, the artists who are listening or the artists who are also participating. Um, yeah, any, any final thoughts about things that you want to share? Any well wishes about things also? I think we all don't know what we are doing. So let's just take it slow and just appreciate that. Appreciate this discomfort. <laughs> you know, like every day we wake up and then we're not really sure when this COVID pandemic will end. We don't really know what's happening, what's funding going to be like. You know, maybe we should just take a step back and um, understand our emotions a little bit more. And perhaps by understanding ourselves a bit more and how we function, then we will be able to create even better artworks. Take the time to become better artists and better people. Mm -hmm. Uh, golf, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, I think I would like, I would love to give the last thought about. Uh, I, I, I realized once I work with the youth that you cannot own them. You cannot feel like they will be your team in the future because it's not going to happen. It never will be because you are just like your, it's like you are just like their parents for once. And once they have to find their own family. So working with youth 
you cannot imagine that how you're gonna make it bigger and make it more people something like that but working with youth it actually have to thinking about how we give the process that they can explore and find the meaning of their life by our equipment something like this this is the thing that we can do best already okay um one thing i learned um in this pandemic is that uh, or working with youth is that um uh to help them in their development and also in their in the mental in their mental health um you have to allow them to express you have to allow them to share you have to allow them to allow them to to figure things out through uh through creative processes but at the same time there's also the the aspect of community mm. sometimes what we arts educator give them is not enough because the community that they're part of is is a stronger force and brings them to uh, a dark place and if that's based on my experience so sometimes um, most of the time the young people make choices but uh, the forces around them is also is also strong so what i'm saying what i'm trying to say is that more than creating more than more than giving them um experiences in the arts we also have to really reach out to bigger communities to the to, to wide to wider community and this pandemic just uh showed us especially that people young people are stuck in their homes that um the more we retreat the more we the more we give up as educators because of things that we cannot do and we cannot we, we that are difficult the more that they are put in uh, the more that they are put in um in a difficult situation the young people are put in a difficult situation because they're losing the the, the opportunities so i think it's it's always positive to say let's try <laughs> we don't know we have to try <laughs> yeah uh, i think yeah, it is sometimes a little hard because it, it, it's deceptively simple. And I guess that's also something that we know from, from being artists is that often you have to make things look very easy um, when actually it takes a lot of time to, to learn how to do. But yeah, it seems deceptively easy that all you have to do is, is stay at home and, and not talk to anyone and not touch anyone. Um, but yeah, that there's a there's a lot more to it, and there's a lot more layers of of things that need to be addressed and and worked through, in order to to really give the most benefit to the community. And yeah, it's been a question that I think everyone's been struggling with, uh, is like how do we keep our communities and how do we keep strengthening them uh, when when we can't be together physically and how can we continue to support each other, especially those who, who don't have the same kind of access to, to technology and are very isolated. And I think there's, there's a portion of youth who are, are very connected and, and are doing very well, but how do we also not leave behind the youth who, who don't have the same access to technology that, that we are, are very fortunate to have. And I'm very, 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 very grateful that, that you guys all have access to to Zoom and Facebook and your emails, but uh, you know, it's it was very scary for us to to initially start to try and reach out to to artists to to be able to come online. It was very we'd never tried to do so much online before, and we're very 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 grateful for uh, all of your your patience and. Um, willingness to, to participate and be a part of it. Um, and I really do look forward to, to seeing more conversations. I mean, there's so much wisdom just amongst the three of you alone. Um, and I look forward to, to seeing where we can, can go from here and, and the opportunities that will come out. 
Uh, so Terence would also like to come in and say something as well. No, and Hatta also. And Hatta also. Hatta. No, Hatta doesn't want to come in. No. Yeah. Hatta says um, no. So wow, um, I look very. Um, hmm? <laughs> now you know what your actual skin color looks like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, can they hear me or no? Can you hear Terence? Yeah. So yeah, okay. anyways, I just want to say thank you all. Uh, this has been a very big experiment for me and the team, uh, Hatta and everybody. Um, so our, we will work together soon. Um, the idea is that, I mean, more or less we know now the working, you guys worked out the possible projects yet? We've worked out that there's room for collaboration. Okay, can. Well, <laughs> we're definitely going to need your help. It's okay. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're definitely going to need uh, your help later this uh, afternoon if you have the time and of course uh, to stay on to watch some of the other discussions on the youth with the other artists as well. But we're going to need your help and um, later on the Zoom chat maybe, uh, you guys maybe can start discussing a possible um, a workflow lah, if that's okay with you. There is a budget for you to start um, brainstorming. Uh, we will send over some honoraria and some, um, af after we have some plan, we will send some honoraria and um, to give a presentation. Hope I mean, with COVID situation, we don't know what kind of situation uh, presentation, but most likely is going to be on uh, um, internet. So whatever we are doing now, <laughs> next time you also must do. <laughs> So we will send you the uh, the ideas, the technology, all this thing. We only use a few laptops and we manage to do this. So we hope that you can invite uh, people in the community to use a phone also to like this, chit chat, dialogue, create projects together. And then the next presentation we are trying to do in Singapore, but probably online or hopefully can visit, <laughs> we will see. <laughs> okay, so, so please hang on uh, after we end the transmission and please have dialogue um, to talk about the timeline and then, okay, and then we get back to work, okay? okay? But just thank you all so much for all your patience and thank you for joining us today in this working group. Thank you. Thank you for having us too. Uh, Salamat. Salamat. <laughs> Terima kasih. <laughs> nice, wonderful. Okay, so let's. Uh, do I have? Okay, so to do the the formal closing um, for for people who are watching us live. Um, yeah, again, thank you for thank you Nabila, thank you Gol, Kapungka, Terima kasih. Thank you so much for joining us, and again, thank you to. ASEAN Foundation for making all of these wonderful things happen and the ASEAN Korea Collaboration Fund and T-Works for having us and our lovely tech team and our lovely team who are managing our social medias also. Very, very, very grateful for all their work. And yeah, we look forward to seeing everyone. We've got another session coming up in the next hour. Beautiful. All right, thank you. Thank you. YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, thanks. Nice. Let me go. Okay. What? You? Ah, yes, cool. So we're, we're officially offline. Wonderful. So, yeah, in terms of next steps for you guys, um, I mean, I know you must, like, it's a two hour long conversation is quite a long time to be talking, um, especially online. So, um, would you guys like me to? Uh, bring you together on a in email or Facebook or yeah, WhatsApp or this uh, by email please because I got to re uh, get ready for a lesson now. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can, can, can. Wonderful. Yeah, but bounces of here, everyone. I look forward to your email and seeing everyone again. Okay, cool. Okay. Will do. Yeah, I'm okay with email too. Okay, can, can, can. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. Thanks, Nabila. Nabila had to run because mm. it's two o'clock already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll send you guys an email and then we can kind of work things from that. But yeah, I reckon we'll probably do another Zoom meeting maybe next week to, to iron a few things out, okay? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it also gives us an idea of like what the others are doing. So now we yeah. can...
maybe imagine something. I imagine something. Yeah, no, yeah. it's fine. Hmm? That sounds fine. Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you again so much. And okay. We, uh, look forward to, to talking again soon. Say hey to Jay for us. Oh, yeah. Say hey to Jay. Say hey to Dessa. Oh, yeah. Say hey to Dessa. <laughs> okay. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.